In today's episode, we'll discuss the events that occurred in 2008 in Iowa, U.S. When the detectives arrived at the scene, they thought it was an ordinary car accident. But soon, this case proved them wrong. The police solved the mysterious death of 41-year-old Michelle Davis, thanks to the CCTV footage, which helped to find out what really happened and who was behind it. Michelle Ann Cosner was born on December 15, 1966, in Iowa. In 2008, the 41-year-old woman lived in Des Moines and had three children. She was on the threshold of a new stage in her life. The court almost finalized her divorce papers. Michelle was looking forward to starting a new life. She has already moved into a separate apartment and filed a restraining order against her husband, Randy Davis. The family had an uneasy relationship in the years leading up to the divorce. People describe Michelle as a friendly, active person who loved adventures and motorcycles. She worked as a secretary for a trucking company and enjoyed respect and authority in the workplace. On Thursday, September 11, 2008, Michelle was at work. Colleagues noticed that after parting with her husband, she looked like she got rid of a burden weighing her down for many years. On this day, Michelle was in a good mood and left work around 4.30 p.m., having finished all her business. Shortly after that, the 911 began receiving calls from eyewitnesses who informed the operator about an accident on Interstate 235. The Mercury Sable car was upside down with a woman still wearing a seatbelt in the driver's seat. She was unconscious. Unfortunately, paramedics who arrived at the scene couldn't save her. The deceased woman's name was Michelle Davis. After arriving at the scene, the police decided that Michelle lost control of the vehicle which resulted in an accident. However, the very next day, they excluded this version. The forensic experts concluded that Michelle did not die from hitting her head during the rollover. The cause of her death was a bullet wound to the head. They extracted the bullet and sent it for examination, hoping it would help to find the criminal. The investigators assigned to this case had never encountered such a thing before. While waiting for the results of the ballistic examination, the local authorities decided to ensure the safety of the people on the street. After all, what if Michelle was a random victim, not chosen in advance? What if there was a shooter that wouldn't stop at one victim? The number of cars that drive on this interstate is large, and each driver could be a potential target for the distraught shooter. It was crucial to solve this case as soon as possible. Hence, the police started patrolling the city more often, when it became clear that Michelle's death was not accidental, detectives went to the crime scene, hoping to understand where the shooter could be and whether he left any traces. And yet it didn't bring any results. They found neither the cartridge case nor any other evidence that could help the investigation. Moreover, since the police initially assumed that Michelle was the victim of a car accident, the traffic services cleared the site. Hence, even if there was any evidence, it was irretrievably destroyed. But despite all this, the detectives did not despair and hoped to get some answers by reviewing the recordings from traffic cameras. Nowadays, CCTV cameras often help the police to solve various cases, and this case was no exception. Having the recordings from the traffic cameras at their disposal, the investigators immediately began to study them. First, they needed to find the recording from the camera closest to the crime scene and rewind it to when people started calling 911. Half an hour later, the investigators found what they were looking for. The video showed Michelle's car lying upside down. However, the quality of the footage wasn't good, so the video was more like a slideshow in the form of separate alternating pictures with intervals between them. As a result, the investigators had only a few necessary shots, none of which showed what led to the rollover of Michelle's car. It was an unpleasant development because the investigators were sure they already had the necessary clue, but unfortunately, it was a false hope. All that remained for the police to do was to continue checking the remaining camera recordings and look for possible eyewitnesses. While the police team continued to study the recordings from other traffic cameras, 
The investigator assigned to the Michelle Davis case went to her family to inform them that her death was not an accident, as initially assumed. Hearing that Michelle was the victim of a crime put her family in shock. Michelle's mother, Patty, died long before Michelle's life ended. As for her father, Michael Lee Cosner, it was the loss of his second daughter. His first daughter and Michelle's older sister, Cheryl Sue Cosner, died in 1965 when she was around one year old. And now, 43 years later, Michael Cosner has lost another child. Outliving the children is the worst thing parents can go through. Michelle's family told the investigator her life was gradually changing, mentioning she had no financial problems. However, the family believed that the only person who could harm Michelle was her husband, Randy Davis. After all, the court almost finalized their divorce, and she filed a restraining order against him. At the same time, another detective visited the company where Michelle worked to talk to her colleagues. That's how the investigators learned that Michelle had a close relationship with another man after breaking up with her husband. This man's name was Matt Jorgensen, and he was her colleague. According to Michelle's friend, the feelings between this couple were mutual. However, since Michelle was in the process of divorcing Randy Davis, they decided to keep their relationship a secret, so only some colleagues and close friends knew about it. Hence, the police now had two potential suspects. Randy Davis and Matt Jorgensen. Attempts to contact Randy were unsuccessful. All calls went straight to voicemail. As for Matt, the investigators met with him to ask questions about his whereabouts on the day of Michelle's death. He did not hide anything, admitting he and Michelle had a romantic relationship. As he said, they never argued or had fights. The man was shocked by Michelle's death, so he told every detail of what he was doing on the day she died. His alibi checked out, and the police excluded him from the list of suspects. When the results of the ballistic examination came, it became known that the weapon of the crime was a 22 caliber rifle. Experts concluded it was a close range shot. Moreover, since everything happened while driving on the interstate, the police believed the shooter was most likely in another car that drove next to Michelle's car. At the same time, this case had a new suspect, the police received a call from the insurance company and reported that Michelle's brother, Todd, was claiming payment under her life insurance. Crimes committed with the motive to receive money under life insurance are not unusual. But was this case one of them? Could Todd have taken his sister's life to get this payout? The detective went to his house to ask some questions. When he started interrogating Todd about where he was when Michelle died, the latter realized the police considered him a suspect. He told everything he was doing on the day of his sister's death. Todd said their family was in a difficult financial situation and could not organize a decent funeral for Michelle. Thus, he turned to the insurance company because he needed the money for Michelle's funeral. The police checked Todd's alibi and learned that he was in another part of the city at the time of Michelle's death. Hence, Todd wasn't the one who shot her. However, Todd still gave the police information that allowed them to find another suspect, Michelle's stepson, Josh. When Michelle married Randy, he already had a son from a previous marriage. At the time of Michelle's death, Josh was already an adult. He was a Marine who returned home from the Army shortly before someone fatally wounded Michelle on the road. Josh knew how to handle weapons, which made him one of the suspects. The police started analyzing whether Josh had motives for committing this crime. Meanwhile, the police received another clue. A woman reported that she was driving on Interstate 235 on the same day and at the same time when Michelle's car rolled over. According to the caller, she saw a red pickup truck, presumably a Ford F-150, whose driver behaved strangely, swerving from one lane to another. It gave the impression that he was chasing someone. The woman described the driver as an adult white man in a baseball cap, and that's all she could see. This new information seemed important, so the investigators started checking it. They again turned to footage from the traffic cameras, but now they focused on finding whether there was a red pickup truck nearby. And the woman was right. The footage showed a red pickup truck following Michelle right from her place of work. But again, the quality of the footage prevented the police from seeing the driver's face 
and the license plates of the red pickup truck. After reviewing the recordings from other cameras, investigators concluded the red pickup truck was driving along the same route as Michelle, following her every move. It was hardly a coincidence. Moreover, when Michelle was approaching the place of her death, the pickup truck was very close behind her. This information suggested that the criminal fired his decisive shot while driving. With several suspects in mind, detectives quickly discovered that Michelle's husband, Randy Davis, owned a red pickup truck. Detectives immediately went to his house. Randy was not at home, but his son Josh was there. He was a Marine who knew how to handle weapons professionally and could have access to his father's car. Josh told detectives that on the day of Michelle's death, he and his sister went shopping, after which he returned home and spent the evening watching TV. He said that Michelle's divorce from his father was an arduous process because among other things, she wanted to get half the house value. Josh also said his father came home around 5.30 p.m. that day. Josh's story didn't look convincing. Moreover, this conversation made it clear that he could have a motive for committing the crime. Josh was very displeased that his stepmom decided to take part of his estate from him during the divorce process with his father. But these were just assumptions without any physical evidence. And no evidence means no arrest and no charges. While Michelle's family prepared for the funeral, the police searched for new leads. The police began to go around all the shops and gas stations along the route from her place of work to where she died, hoping to find additional surveillance footage. A few miles from the trucking company where she worked, there was a store where the police found another footage crucial to the investigation. While the surveillance camera was inside the store, it still captured part of the parking lot. On September 11, 2008, the day Michelle died, a red pickup truck drove to the store and parked at the entrance at about 4 p.m. The police knew the pickup truck belonged to Randy Davis, but since his son Josh also had access to it, they needed to find out which one was driving it that day. The footage showed the driver exiting the car and entering the store. However, due to the poor quality of the video, investigators couldn't determine whether it was Josh Davis or his father, Randy. At some point, the man disappeared from the camera's field of view, but after a while, he reappeared, purchased something, and left the store. Then he got into his car and drove away. I want to remind you that all this happened at 4 p.m. while Michelle left work at 4.30 p.m. The police continued analyzing the footage and found that over the next 30 minutes, the pickup truck returned to the store several times. However, the driver did not exit the car, but turned around and drove away again. The last time the pickup truck appeared near the store was when Michelle left work. Unable to identify the suspect, the police again tried to contact Michelle's husband, Randy Davis. The latter finally got in touch and showed up at the police station. The investigators explained to him his rights, clarifying he was not under arrest. Randy agreed to answer some questions. They asked what he was doing on September 11th. Randy mentioned going through the arduous divorce procedure with Michelle. After all, they were married for 17 years. He also said he worked as a carpenter and was at work that day. When asked when he got home, Randy hesitated, but later said he was home at 3.45 p.m. It contradicted the surveillance footage and did not correspond to the testimony of Josh, who said that his father came home around 5.30 p.m. Randy said he didn't leave home after 3.45 p.m. He stated he was home alone, but then his son Josh came, and they cooked dinner together. This information again contradicted Josh's testimony, who told investigators he was already home when his father came. The alibis of the father and son depended on each other, and after talking with Randy, the investigators realized that one of them was lying. To see Randy's reaction, investigators informed him that Michelle died from a bullet, not from injuries sustained during a car crash. After all, the only people who knew about it were Michelle's family, because the police did not disclose this information. Randy practically didn't react to this news in any way, simply pretending to be surprised and lowering his eyes. After the police asked him when he had last seen Michelle, Randy demanded a lawyer. Thus, the conversation was over. 
The investigation had neither the weapon used to take Michelle's life nor any other significant evidence that could serve as a basis for arrest, so they had to release him. On September 15, 2008, four days after Michelle's death, her family and friends gathered for a funeral ceremony. Randy Davis was also among those who came to say goodbye to Michelle. With his whole appearance, he tried to show that what had happened was a heavy loss for him. He even burst into tears at some point. But who was responsible for the death of Michelle Davis? The investigators did everything possible to answer this question quickly. Help came from where no one expected. Josh Davis entered the police station with his lawyer and said he wanted to make a statement. According to his statement, his father's car was parked in the driveway when he returned home from his sister. He entered the house and saw his father there with a gun in his hands. Randy told his son it would be better if he didn't come now. According to Josh, he understood what his father was up to. He tried to stop him, begging him not to do things he would regret later. But Randy still got in the car and drove away. When he returned, he drove the car into the garage. Josh went to the garage, where his father confessed that he had shot Michelle. Randy Davis was upset that his wife filed for divorce and decided to sue him for part of the property. He could not accept this and decided to take drastic measures. On September 11, 2008, Randy parked his red pickup truck outside the store and waited for Michelle to leave work. He drove past the place where Michelle worked several times, afraid to miss the moment. It explained why Randy appeared on the store's CCTV footage several times. After Michelle left work, he followed her. When the right moment came, he rolled down the passenger side window and fired. Based on Josh's testimony, the police arrested Randy Davis. He received the first-degree charges for taking the life of Michelle. However, before going to trial, Randy signed a deal, pleading guilty to second-degree deprivation of life in exchange for a milder sentence. Based on this, 53-year-old Randy Davis was sentenced to 50 years in prison in 2010. His guilty plea means there won't be a trial. By not having a trial, maybe we missed justice a little bit. But you know, we did get what we wanted. We knew he did it, and he admitted that he did it, says Michelle's brother Todd Cosner. He said Davis had destroyed their family. I loved Randy. He was part of my family for 17 years. I cared about him, said Todd Cosner. 